My name is Vitas and today I will show you how Teamhood can be used for full life cycle of your projects and it can be used by any stakeholder because it's that easy. So to model and make a good example, I chose two different types of projects today. First, you already see on my screen, it is like a medium sized, a bit more complex project example which tends to be found among our customers who work in engineering, IT, technical or biotech um, industries. And then they usually take between 6 to 24 months and involve at least 5 different people working in parallel um, on the project. And the second example um, are smaller projects which we tend to find among agencies uh, who deliver some sort of service um, and they're very focused on throughput, on efficiency, uh, because they have around from 10 to between 10 to 100 uh, of small projects each year. Um, and those projects take between one and six months and there are at least two people working in parallel on the same project. And in the first case of this medium sized project, I'm showing you a classical Gantt chart, well, because that project requires more detailed planning and scheduling between tasks, dependencies, milestone setting, and also um, creating these neat uh, charts to share and uh, confirm with our customers. Um, while the smaller ones, um, as I said, we focus on throughput, so we need to visualize the workflow what happens from the idea to actual successful project finishing. And uh, we want to visualize all that work in single board um, so we can scrum with the team and solve impediments, make scheduling changes and reassign people if needed. So I've already introduced you to two different features. One is Gantt, the other one is Kanban. Let me dive in a bit into Gantt. So on the left side here, you see project work breakdown structure, which includes tasks and free task groups. We call them rows. So in this case, I have procurement, logistics and quality assurance. And in each of those rows, I have items which are required to be finished to make that stage successful. And each item in here, um, it has some sort of, you know, information inside of it, as well as like hierarchy. So if I have a bigger item, uh, which requires to be broken down further, I can do that with sub items and keep that unlimited nesting in team. That's very powerful. And you can actually model very complicated and large projects in our system. Then um, when you agree with your customers that this is the good uh, project plan, this is what you're going to commit to, you want to save it as baseline. So later you can compare it and see what were the differences uh, during the road to success. And maybe if something got delayed, you can always compare and see, okay, so which things impacted our project finishing one week later than we, than we anticipated. And you can identify how many days things got finished later or earlier, luckily, um, instead of actual plan. Then um, it's a very simple structure what I'm showing you. It, each item just has a title and the percentage of completion, but you can add more things to it. Um, like we call them fields and you can even add custom ones which you create yourself. So in this case I will add assignee and priority fields. Assignee is a default one where can uh, where can I specify who is actually responsible or who is actually going to perform the work. And then priority is just a custom drop down field which I will use to identify which, which items you know are more important than the others and which things we should focus on. And the same can be done in the Kanban view where we have our smaller projects as, as items. Um, I, can, I can toggle various fields to be visible here. Same way I can toggle priority to be viewed um, among, among the items. Um, a very neat feature that I would like uh, to see you is our expanding swim lanes. So for instance, I have my small project and it's in planning stage. Um, I don't want to focus too much on details, but when we start working, I want it to expand so all these details become standalone items. And then I can work with them as standalone Kanban cards. 
until all of them get finished and my small project gets finished. That's very powerful uh, when you need to visualize large amount of data and you need to preserve space on your screen, um, which you're using for project management. Um, if we go further, um, we should look what's inside each of those items. Um, and each item can have various things uh, defined in it. So maybe let's open this one. Um, it's a good example because it has a bit more data. Um, I can specify rich description, you know, what is the specification for this work. Um, I can attach files like this image attached in, 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 in such case. I can use tags both for like figuring out like additional information where, which can become very useful for people who will do the work. Um, or I actually can use them to tag things which I will later use for reporting. And believe me, tags are especially useful when you need to do some sort of re reporting and slicing your data. And then many more things like relationships, if it has child items, if it has dependencies that require to be finished prior to starting this item, or I can write comments, mention people so they take uh, attention and receive notifications inside the system and via email and via integrations to like popular chat tools like Slack or Teams. Um, I, can, I can do various things uh, regarding my custom fields as explained before. Um, and then of course, very, the most important, very important data that we would need to set, schedule, estimation um, in hours, um, human hours, budget. Um, and if we are very interested in comparing what do we estimate and how much time do we take actually, we can do time tracking. Time tracking is natively integrated in Teamhood. Um, you can do active time tracking, passive time tracking, and later report on that data. Very powerful. I will show you that in a few seconds. Um, having covered items and our projects, um, on the left side, by the way, what you see, it's my company, fictional company, which I call just East Wind Incorporated. Um, I have three projects, Project Neptune, then I have a dedicated like project board where I put all my smaller ones, as I just showed you. And I have a third one, which I just called Wind Farms. Um, it's also like a separate project. Um, it's very good to group those projects because then this workspace, uh, East Wind Incorporated, is like a portfolio. And by having multiple projects in the same portfolio, I can create so-called workspace views. And each view is a specific way or a specific perspective into your project data. Like just the one I just opened. Um, it's workload. So I can collect data from all the projects inside of this portfolio and I can see what people are doing or what kind of plans they have for each week. Um, if we measure estimated hours, it will also create you an understanding where do you have extra capacity and where people are already overloaded. And you will be able to quickly redistribute tasks in this view without switching back and forth from project to project. This is extremely powerful, super loved by our users. Um, I really recommend looking into it. It can save you a lot of hassle when projects get blocked just because of simple things um, and just because of lack of resources. And by the way, if you're using tags, you can use them as machinery resources because what I'm showing you here are human resources. So it's based on users, on people who work in the system. While if you have like, I don't know, a crane or some um, technical machinery that is required for the project, you can just use tags and transform this report into grouping by tag. It will show you the same information by tag. Very powerful. A lot of things you can configure. You can even put custom um, work hours for people. If somebody's working half time or full time or maybe even 24 hours. Well, I hope that's not true, but yeah, sometimes it happens. Um, this, this is what you can do. Let's move on. Um, workload done. Now let's look at portfolio overview. Again, as I've said, it's very convenient to put all your projects in a single portfolio because then you can use these professional reports, um, like, a, like this helicopter view, uh, where we are really curious to see only like, what is the total budget of the project? What's the situation in like progress? Is it ahead of time? Is it behind behind the schedule? 
and it has these neat uh, professional metrics like what's the earned value at the given date based on the given schedule and what's the schedule performance uh, indicate, uh, index. It means it can answer as a question, are we late or we're we are ahead? That's kind of it. Very simple, very fast information delivery screen um, for all your projects. Let's move on. If you need these grit nitty gritty details for every project, this is why we have dashboards and you can configure various widgets, um, totally customizable. Um, you can define layout as way, the way you want. Um, you can show like charts of the progress. You can do summing or aggregation of data based on your um, project tasks. You can create like quick lists, which show like in, in this case, I'm showing you like which items require finishing this week. So it's like my team can focus and come in into this dashboard and say, okay, this is what we need to do this week. And I can also see as a project manager what things uh, are already late. Super convenient. Um, Everything is aggregated from numerous projects and you can define filters if you want to exclude something. And lastly, as mentioned before, if you're into time tracking, you will use timesheet report most definitely, which um, delivers you an uh, understanding. What was the time estimated and how much time did we spend? If items get finished, Teamhood will show you the difference, whether you were better than estimated or worse. And of course, you can set even hourly rates for people. So Teamhood will calculate you the actual cost based on your time tracking. Extremely efficient, save you a lot of time, needs a bit of tweaking and configuring to depend uh, to, to fit your um, organizational structure and your process. But once done, extremely, extremely efficient. And you can even share it with customers, uh, your customers. And by the way, any element in Teamhood, like these boards, project boards or, or workspace views, um, they can be shared as live uh, links. If you change something, it instantly changes there. And you can give that link to your customers um, so they can feel full transparency and be fully included in your project progress. A lot of users love it. People keep sharing it and telling us that's one of the greatest features. Well, you should look at it most definitely. Um, let's go on. Um, next thing, um, what I wanted to show is project documentation. That's another very important piece of project lifecycle. So if you need to define something both internally and externally, you really need to make notes um, create some schematics, attach images. This is where you will be doing that in Teamhood. Um, we call them pages. It's like documentation pages. And of course they can be shared publicly or, or privately. Um, and you can put a lot of things in here. The best thing about it is that those project documentation pages will live so close to your projects. It will be so convenient for full team to get all the data they need to successfully deliver the project. And this is what this is what I might mean when I mention that Teamhood is like a coherent single golden source of truth system. So everything in one place. It it is it is extreme benefit and advantage for your business. Um, but yeah, this is one of the features, full life cycle covered by all of them. Let's move on. Um, if we look from personal contributor perspective, uh, a person working in Teamhood, this is the home screen. Every every person starts their day um, as, as a user in Teamhood by looking at the screen, by opening Teamhood and seeing the screen. It's like a quick list of what I need to do today, what things are already overdue, um, and what things I will need to do in the upcoming seven days. It's my agenda, right? And super helpful, takes all the, pro all the data from all the projects, aggregates it and presents you in one simple list. Next, depending on contributors, you might want to define different roles. That's also done on workspace level. So for instance, if you're working with like third parties, you can invite them as guest users into Teamhood. The good news are that it's totally free. Based on your subscription plan, you can have from 5 to 20 guest users for free, which can be limited collaborators. And by limited, I mean 
maybe uh, you don't want to show whole data for the, uh, to, to them maybe you want to uh, to allow them to see only the items that they are assigned to so if that person is limited collaborator and I assign it to them they will see only the items they are assigned to and they will be able to change only those items very powerful um, and it makes your collaboration efforts so much easier because everyone both internally and externally will be working again in same coherent um, single source of golden truth system uh, yeah and covering those roles I want to dive in a bit into settings to show you how much you can customize and adapt Teamhood to your needs. Um, you can even turn on or off the features. Um, you can define custom fields um, to allow creating specific data, which is really specific only to your company. Um, tags, as mentioned before, item templates. This is important because you need to standardize as much as possible. So you are fully productive and people are sure not to miss something when creating new work. So define templates for items, including full breakdown structures, assignments, estimations, and descriptions. Um, and that's what we call these item templates. Um, then you can, as mentioned before, involve various people, define their roles, set their hourly rates, um, and collaborate in the system. And of, most definitely you can integrate and automate things um, around teamhood so definitely if you mention people in comments if if you um, write comments for other people's items they will receive notifications both in the system they can integrate with popular chat tools like slack or microsoft teams um, you can integrate with our api and do your own uh, syncing of workflows you can definitely leverage zapier which includes like 3500 different business tools for for integration with teamhood um, to make that data flowing uh, between your business systems um, and of course you can do a lot of personalization uh, based on user needs what they receive uh, what kind of information um, and what kind of uh, what kind of views they prefer so they can customize um, on personal level so there's far more to cover I just wanted to do a short walkthrough of uh, what do we have in Teamhood and why do we call it like a full project lifecycle system. Um, if you need more information, please look at our other videos um, or just book a meeting with us. And yeah, just, you know, um, give Teamhood a try and uh, make your projects a success. Thank you.